Hey, in the comment section on one of the videos, uh, I had a question posed to me about whether I thought training slings was a feasible thing to do or necessary. And I'm aware of slings. I know what the concept is. It's that you have these slings of muscle that link up either muscularly or fascially to produce movements. And I believe that there are slings in the sense that we see connections in the human body and then you, you name it something. You can name it uh, a sling, a zone. Uh, in postural restoration, they name it a chain. So a, poly, a polyarticular chain of muscles. So you can name these connections anything you want, but what they're trying to do is conceptualize a grouping of muscles that are performing a particular movement. And this particular question was in, in regards to a post, I think it was, it was the posterior, posterior sling, some sort of posterior sling. So it just so happens that in my massage and body work magazine, I am a massage therapist as well, as well even though I don't really do many massages. Uh, there's a very a famous author, researcher, his name is Leon Chatow. I think that's how you pronounce his name. He actually just died, but uh, he's very well known in the movement community. He's written a lot of influential books. And I guess his last one was more about fascia. And in it, he's, this actually came up, the anterior sling and the posterior sling. So he wrote that, uh, for example, Joseph et al. have demonstrated that an excessive anterior translation of the humeral head, so an anterior translation, let's say, of the right shoulder, of the humeral head would be this. So the, humor, the head of the humerus is moving forward in, in the shoulder joint. Due to altered force transmission from the posterior oblique sling tissues in individuals with sacroiliac joint dysfunction. So what they're pretty much saying is that people with SI joint dysfunction also seem to have an excessive anterior humeral joint or humeral head movement inside the shoulder joint. And interestingly enough, and, and he's attributing it to altered force transmission because of this sling, but he's talking really more in a fascial sense. The oblique muscle sling train or chain that lies on the posterior aspect of the trunk involves muscles such as the biceps femoris, the hamstring, glute max, thoracolumbar fascia, latissimus dorsi, and upper trapezius. So what he's saying is if it's the right shoulder that comes forward, what you'll also find is altered force transmission, however they're measuring that, from the, op from the contralateral, so the opposite side, so from the left, hamstring, glute, thoracolumbar fascia, so basically the fascia that crosses over from this left pelvis, crosses the spine to the right lat, to your right lat, and then the upper trap, so your upper right trap. Now, interestingly enough, that is the same group of muscles that postural restoration is talking about in the left AIC, right BC pattern. And what happens when those muscles, when those groups of muscles uh, are weak? Well, you have a shoulder blade on, uh, I don't have my skeleton, a shoulder blade on the right that translates forward. It, it, the scap, on the scapula, on the shoulder blade, it abducts and moves forward, it internally rotates. So that might be explaining that anterior movement of the humerus in the shoulder joint. Because in the left AIC, you're going to have a weak hamstring, a weak glute, a weak low trap. The right lat will actually be overactive. The right trap will be overactive. So it's interesting, you have a 
underactive left hamstring and underactive left glute because of the pelvis is rotated forward. And it's that forwardly rotated position that makes those muscles weak. But then you have overactive right lat, overactive right upper trap. And that's completely common in the right BC pattern because your torso is being held to the right side and your head is counter rotating to the left. And the upper trap is being used as a accessory breathing muscle. It's trying to pull your rib cage up to help get air in when it can't. Uh, there's more on that exact issue on the video I posted previously about the right shoulder blade. So would it be beneficial to train that sling? Yes, if the pelvis is in the proper position. If the pelvis is rotated forward, you could try to train that sling in some way, but you're not gonna be getting much left glute, you're not gonna be getting much left hamstring because the pelvis is stuck in a position it can't get out of. You're gonna get a whole lot of right lat and a whole lot of right trap, but I think you're just gonna be accentuating or cementing that right-sided position that you're kind of getting stuck in. So these slings are fine as long as you're in the proper position to actually utilize them because that sling then has to turn off to let the other side of the body come forward. So remember this all goes back to walking. All right, and in these patterns we're not using the, the opposite pattern uh, as much as the one pattern. So we're not alternating patterns, we're just using a right side pattern, right side pattern, right side pattern. And that overuse of right side pattern equates with a weak left glute, weak left hamstring, overactive right lat, overactive right upper trap. In order to train that sling effectively, which is walking, you have to position the pelvis. And training the sling won't do it, you actually have to train uh, the stages of gait. So left stance and right stance, left stance and right stance. A big part of the healing process is exercise and in particular training the movement patterns that you've lost. So if you like this video, could you please like it, share it, subscribe to the channel, do whatever you have to do to, to spread the word so other people can benefit just like I have.